Before 100 years ago, there was just no such thing as breadwinner. Like there, there, there was this kind of this context of like, I leave, I make the money. Like that didn't exist. What's up, guys? Jeff and Jeremy here. Uh, another good question today. Now, this one, I don't, it, it, the relevancy of it uh, is, is different in this moment <laughs> than I true. think in normal, but I still think it's a helpful question regardless that'll be evergreen. And the question is, what about stay-at-home dads? Is that okay? Is that appropriate? Brandon asked this, so this is a question that we're trying to answer from our community. Could I still fulfill my God-given role as a father staying at home to nurture and raise our kids while my wife takes up the role of the breadwinner? Would I be giving up my responsibilities as the leader in my household? I have heard many different takes on this, and I can't figure out exactly what the Bible really says about it. That's a good question, hard question. I know a lot of people wrestle with it. I'll, I'll say one thing, and I'll let Jeremy then talk about kind of the, the vision I think we see in scriptures, but I'll talk about the more, uh, what would this be, sociological or historical perspective. And that's the fact that before 100 years ago, there was just no such thing as breadwinner. Like the, that, there this kind of this context of like, I leave, I make the money. Like that didn't exist. The, scru- the, the, the world of the scriptures, the home was an economic and a familial kind of orbiting force that was all wrapped up into one, meaning like it was just its own entity. It was its own unit. There was no one that was a breadwinner. There was no one that was not a breadwinner. It was just a team that works and serves each other. Now there was, of course, I do think there was structure, organization, deference, et cetera. But I really like, this is only a 21st century question to a 21st century problem. And so I just think it's kind of useless and pointless at some layer now, you know, um, of just like we, and we're, or here's another way to put it. I think it becomes really problematic when you then try to go into the first century text and have it answer right. your 21st century problem. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Like, it's like, no, we have no, we have no context or even ability to understand how different it was in the first century than today. Um, in the point of just like, yeah, that classic model of like, should I stay home or should I leave? It's like, no one ever left back then, but it was just like a, it was more of this team <laughs> right. rather. Yeah. I can go on and on and on that, but I just think you have to start there of like, get yourself out of that framework first, because then don't, don't answer the problem with the 21st century century answer. You know what I mean? That's right. Try to answer it with a first century answer. And so that's what I think is different. But what would you say, Jeremy? Yeah. I think like what Jeff is describing is that in the first century, the household was actually an economic unit as a whole. Yeah. And so as a team, the household would go out and the household would, would make money and so the husband, wife would work together, the kids would work together. And this was true in just about every culture at every time until really recently. And now it's becoming true all of a sudden again totally. with this crisis. You know, families are asking, how are we going to make a living? We have to work together. Um, and so th- I think that that's, that's one of the, the, the ways that the things have really changed. Um, and so when he's asked who's, who should be the breadwinner, um, the, the one thing I would say biblically, and, and that is that you guys— it's really important that we're being formed by the story of Scripture. And one of the one of the most relevant elements of Scripture, or parts of the story for this question, is Genesis three. So after the fall, God told Adam, He said that you know you will uh, by the sweat of your brow you will make a living. You'll scratch a living from the earth. And I do think that there is it's a critical that uh, that if your wife makes more money than you, um, that you don't then pull back and no no longer participate. In in sort of income producing ventures, um, and a lot of the guys I've talked to that are that are stay at home dads, they have uh, their wife is working, but they they are engaged in income producing ventures. I think that's really critical um, that you participate in what it means to to really scratch a living from the earth to toil. Um, and so I I would say that that if you abdicate responsibility from from the 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 responsibility to provide for your family and you don't have, you're not like building up skills. You're not um, getting stronger in those areas. If you're completely separating your wife is a hundred percent making money, you're a hundred percent in the house. Um, I think that from a story perspective, there's discipleship for men that Genesis three is describing that I, I think it's critical. You don't abdicate or not experience that. So, um, and there's a lot, a lot of deeper reasons for that. Uh, but I, I would say that, that that's the line that I wouldn't cross. Um, if you're at more, if you're more at home than your wife, if you're watching the kids um, and training them and parenting them, you know, a, a little bit more than she is, I don't think that's necessarily the issue. Um, but I would say what Jeff said, just come come in full circle. The best scenario, you guys, is to work as a team uh, and create economic opportunities that you you can you can invest in together. Um, and if you can find ways to do that, that's uh, that's the the killer solution. And I think. 
uh, with the crisis and things that are happening, um, I would really seriously consider that. So in order for uh, us to help you guys figure out how to, what, what, what do you do as a family during this crisis? Um, we're going to put out a five uh, day challenge. So Jeff, I want you to tell them a little bit about what that's, that's about. Yeah. So guys, we're in this particular moment right now and we're just getting inundated with requests uh, that we want to help serve and want to come alongside. And so we just built this little kind of program where it's five days to use this crisis or this moment to transform your family into a team. Um, And there is a very particular way to walk out of this crisis as a team more strengthened, stronger, using tools and resources that maybe you didn't have before. And we want to help you with that. So if you go to any of our sites, our social, et cetera, we're basically laying out this five-day program. It's totally free. We're literally just going to dump emails to you, probably PDFs, videos, links, et cetera. That's just going to say, hey, step by step, we want to resource you, equip you, and make you feel not pressured or stressful or burdened by the amount of it. We're going to hold your hand and come alongside you. um, And we're really, really excited for that. 